maybe a live demo. And as I started to put together this proposal for how to build your own device owner, I realized it wasn't a suitable option for everyone. In fact, there was a very narrow slice of end users, administrators, developers, who would find themselves in a situation where they want to create their own device owner, which was surprising to me because we have had a number of our larger customers come to us and say this is something that they're going to do. So I thought it was worth putting together more of a story of why you might want to do it and why you might not want to create your own device owner. So they, they say to start your presentation with a call to action. So I, I thought I'd launch off with this. Uh, you may have heard Android are deprecating the device administrator APIs, and they've given a time scale of Android Q to do this. Uh, based on some of the feedback that I saw being given in the sessions yesterday, I don't think many people here at DroidCon are using these device admin APIs. So maybe it's not so much of a, a call to action for many of you. But uh, like essentially, Google is saying that like as of Android Q, so you're looking at 2019, maybe 2020 by the time that gets to enterprise, if you are making use of device admin APIs to, for example, uh, lock the, you know, uh, in, enforce a lock screen pin or disable the camera, these kind of use cases, then if you do nothing, your application will no longer work very well or you could rewrite your app as a device owner or a profile owner. So that's one reason why you might want to go ahead and create a device owner. Maybe more relevant to most people here in this room is the real democratization that we're seeing now in the EMM space. Uh, with the move to a managed Android, the opening of these standard-based APIs for Android management. We've got other presentations about the Android management API. Uh, we've got small EMMs, uh, you know, relatively small EMMs present and sponsoring this event, which just goes to show that now it's very possible to manage devices yourselves without having to buy in expensive or large or proprietary uh, EMMs that only work for a single um, a single device manufacturer. So uh, there's some, some questions. Before you sort of go into this presentation, some questions that you might ask yourself. First of all, who owns the device? This, this um, conversation about whether you're uh, targeting a device owner or a profile owner, I don't want to dwell too much on this because I know other presentations would have mentioned this, but if you've come and visited our booth, then you'll have seen uh, the type of devices which really target a device owner, these devices which are owned by organizations rather than individuals. Uh, they might be public kiosks, they might be uh, barcode scanners like we're demonstrating at the table out there, but that's the type of device where you would use a device owner. It has a single use, a single purpose, and it's owned by a corporation. If your customer is already using an EMM, then you know, the question of whether you have to create a device owner is uh, a moot point, because your EMM has created the device owner for you, and I've got more detail coming up on this, and the same is also true of those managed Android APIs if you were in that presentation earlier on today. Um, the, uh, if you have a device owner, how are you going to control that device owner? So it's all very well and good having complete control on my device, but how do I you know, remotely access the device? How do I provision it? Uh, all of these considerations, do I end up creating my own EMM? Uh, one big point that I think has been glossed over in other talks that I've, um, I've been in a few talks whilst I've been here at DroidCon is uh, do my devices have network access to the cloud? So many of these existing APIs depend on devices having connection from the device to Google servers. It's not always appropriate or applicable or desired in an enterprise environment. Maybe they want to run on premise. Maybe they're behind a firewall. They don't want to open uh, the ports to enable GMS services. So you know, what are you going to do? What, what are your options? And we'll, we'll cover some of those. And uh, I do have uh, some slides about the different types of accounts as well that are available for managed play and, and individual accounts. We'll, we'll go over those. Uh, so, so maybe some more fundamental questions in the room, like what is a device owner? What is a profile owner? So just very quickly, a device owner is an application which is enrolled and provisioned in a very specific way on the device. And once enrolled, you can only have one of them. And that device owner has full ownership and control 
uh, of the device. It has access to the most powerful set of APIs, which is the Device Policy Manager APIs, and it can do the most with that power. Profile owner mode is when you've, you've seen the work profile demonstration with all the badges and the, the you know, work or personal, all of that is a profile. Profile owner when you're talking about BYOD scenarios, but here I'm concentrating on device owner, the single use, the COSU type of scenario. Uh, do, I, do I need to use an EMM? Well, you don't need to use an EMM. That's one of the confusions I see with the documentation online. If you read, uh, like, understanding DPC, understanding device owner, often you'll see that in, in the context of your EMM will invoke this in the device owner. Here's some EMM APIs. Yes, that is how an EMM works, but it's not the only way that you can access those APIs. So I, I just want to make the point that this, although like, you, you'd get the impression that an EMM is required, it's, it's not. Difference between managed player account and G Suite account, I'll, I'll address that later in the presentation. And what has any of this got to do with building my own device owner? That's where I sort of come around full circle with my original, uh, my original thought process for this presentation, that you can't really just jump into creating your own device owner and, and sort of get to the end and realize, hey, I shouldn't really have done this. So I want to present some considerations. So when I was trying to understand this, and you know, it's a few, few months ago now, I sat down and I, I sort of said, well, how do I go about doing this? And you realize there's, there's more than one API available to you. And if you, go, if you take anything away from this presentation, then please take this slide away with you. Uh, so you've heard at this conference, you've heard the Android Management API. That works, that's great. Uh, there, are, there are two different APIs that uh, are available for management of Android devices. So I'll just take it, let me just explain what I've done on this slide. So everything below that center horizontal line resides on the device. It might be the device owner, it might be the profile owner. Everything above that horizontal line lives in the crowd, cloud, that's a crowd of clouds, uh, and the, uh, the horizontal line itself represents um, Google services when you see the, the arrows interacting with those services. So on the left-hand side, this is your typical EMM model. This is your SOTI, your AirWatch. We've got, um, what is this? Um, we, uh, sorry, Wiz Wizzy EMM as well sits in this space uh, with presentation coming up next. And they have access to a specific API from Google called the Google Play EMM API. You're able to call that API. It's very powerful. Uh, and it, with that, you would interact with your EMM's device owner. So an EMM is on the left-hand side there. If an EMM wants to run on premise, then they can optionally uh, create their own interface that offers direct communication between their device owner and their cloud. Now, it's, it's a lot more work because you're not you know, leveraging all of the helpful APIs that Google have provided in the cloud, uh, but it's possible and it's necessary if your devices need to run on-premise or you don't want the devices to have access to Google for any other reason. Um, so c consider those two different options when you're, you're talking about how you're deploying. So your own, I've put your own DPC here. So this whole um, slide that I've put together, the only real use case where you would have for creating your own device owner, your own DPC, is at the bottom here. So you've got two choices. You could either, well, three choices, let's say. First choice, you don't have any kind of cloud access to the device. That's probably the easiest choice. Um, so you know, that's option one. Option two, you might say, well, I want to be able to manage my devices just like a standard EMM does through the EMM API, through this blue API, which Google provides. It's very easy, quick to get up and running, easy to use. Uh, you'll quickly find that unless you are a member at the very top of the slide there of this um, EMM community, the, the cloud API will return to you failed. You're not a member of the EMM community. And, and at that point, you're scratching your head. You think, well, I need to become a member. It, it is possible to be a member, but you need to like, sign various uh, waivers and commit to releasing software within a specific period of time. So. It's, it's for the, the kind of use cases I'm talking about, where you'd create your own device owner for a specific customer, a specific purpose, it doesn't really fly in terms of joining that community. You really are either running totally on your own, on your own device, 
or you're going to be doing all of the work yourself, creating your own direct communication. That means handling things like managed configuration yourself, handling device enrollment, uh, handling uh, policy provisioning, and uh, yeah, it's a, it would be a fair bit of work. Uh, to complete the picture, I'll come over here to make it a bit more symmetrical, I did want to include the various way that the Android management API is used. And this has been in a couple of presentations at this conference, uh, so it's used primarily, what we've been heard about is with the Android device policy on the device, communicating with, you know, you can write your own server app. That's part of the power of the uh, Android management API. There's a very long API name, so it'd be nice if they were shorter. But the key here is you're required to use Google's um, Android device policy, which there's a lot of advantages to that because, you know, we've heard it. Google have already done the work. Uh, it's always updated, they've done a lot of the testing for you, and you don't need to, but if you want to write your own device owner, then any of these red Android management APIs are not appropriate or not usable by yourself in your scenario. Uh, I did want to complete the picture. If you've heard of like G Suite, uh, G Suite have their own device owner, it's called the Google Apps Device Policy, and that's using the, the cloud identity product as G Suite, they offer like identity as a service, and. Uh, AMM-like capabilities, so you may have seen that. The Android management experience, if you're not familiar with that, I thoroughly recommend it. It's how I first learned what, Android managed, what managed Android was and what it was capable of. And because it's using the same API as the, uh, as, as you, if you were to write your own server, then it's a good way to find out the capabilities of the Android management API without having to browse the documentation and, uh, and do it all yourself. And I apologize if I'm repeating anything that might have been said in, in other presentations. I haven't been able to attend all of them. Test DPC, uh, we'll get to this in a, a subsequent slide, is a really, 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 really good, um, but somewhat utilitarian application that shows the, real, the full gamut of capabilities of what a device owner or a profile owner can do. So it's here to complete the picture, but hopefully this gives you some idea of the, the current uh, ecosystem that's out there, the kind of high level 20,000 foot view. Now, I did want to include a couple of slides addressing the question of why should we trust you, um, some random guy on the stage uh, who's telling us all about writing our own device owner. So if you didn't catch it at the beginning, I'm from a company called Zebra Technologies. We produce these exact kind of devices which are applicable to use in a device owner mode. So if you haven't spoken to us, we're just, just outside the door actually, we've got a booth. Uh, all of our devices have inbuilt barcode scanners. They're designed to be owned by the corporation and managed either by an EMM or through, through some other technique, as we're discussing here. Uh, and primarily, people have, have heard of us as like self-shopping. I've got the, this is like a self-scanning gun, but we also have a selection of other ruggedized Android devices. And uh, if you want to play with any of them, then we're just the other side of the door there. In fact, I think everyone's in this presentation. So maybe don't go now, wait until after I finish talking. Um, and just very briefly then, we, you know, we have a, a presence in, in a number of verticals, so retail, transport and logistics, manufacturing, healthcare. So, this, this is where I'm coming from. My day-to-day -day business is understanding our customers, and we have, we have had real instances of customers coming to us saying, we want to create our own device owner. So it's, it's not something that's kind of made up. This is something that's happening, and so I'm trying to address some of the concerns that you might have early. But back to the reasons. What is this? Is this why? Uh, reasons why you should create your own device owner. So we'll go over why you should, and then we'll cover why you shouldn't, and then we'll go over the how. Uh, first of all, obviously, the devices are owned by the business. They have a single purpose. It's these kind of devices like I was showing before. It's a public kiosk in a train station or a retail environment. Um, you would find, like, we have managed Android now. So this is, this is a, an, an interesting point, actually. We have a democratization of EMM APIs, like I said earlier. You can control an awful lot on the device through the device owner APIs. Where we were two, three, four years ago is each OEM was offering APIs. In fact, a lot of, a lot of customers are still there today, are offering APIs which are specific to that OEM. Uh, and so if you were writing a, a mobility manager, you would be 
required to write a specific manager for Zebra devices and a specific manager for Zebra competitor devices and a specific manager for consumer Android. And that was an awful lot of work. So what Google sensibly did, they said, well, let's, let's have a base set of capabilities. We call that managed Android. We put that into the device owner mode. And what we're hearing today is that companies can address about 70 to 80% of their management requirements by using those device policy manager, those device owner APIs. The extra 20% or so will get there in time. Um, but right now, just consider that you may well still have um, OEM-specific APIs to, to have that full management experience. Uh, so I've, I've, I've labeled this slide understanding who might do this. So how does this fit in with your existing use of an EMM? From the diagram I showed earlier, either you don't want to use an EMM, so the device owner is just resident as a, a single application on the device, or you plan on writing the whole kit and caboodle yourself to a Scottish expression. Uh, so you would have the uh, device owner, you would have to write the server component, and you would either have to join the Google EMM community, which probably wouldn't be suitable for everyone, or you would have to write this communication yourself. So there, there's, um, there's two real options there in terms of using an EMM, one of which is not using one. Um, uh, do I need to run on premises? A very important point. If you do need to run on-premise, consider that the existing Google APIs require access to Google servers. Uh, so may, if you're choosing an EMM, make sure it supports on-premise deployments. Again, not a big requirement for everyone, but some of our customers, that is a, an absolute must-have. So it really depends on the use case and the client. We have heard an awful lot uh, at DroidCon about the great the greatness, the inherent greatness of Google Play Store. And I would back that up. Managed Play Store is a really great way of putting applications onto managed devices. So I, I don't need to say anything more about that. What I would like to cover is um, you've heard very valid points about we don't want to be enabling install unknown sources. That's great, completely agree. You don't want to be uh, copying APKs to the SD card and tapping on them to install, absolutely agree. But OEMs do have uh, software applications which can make that application management easier if you don't want to use an EMM. So in terms of deploying applications, Zebra offer a tool called StageNow. And this, this isn't just a sales pitch. There are other tools from our competitors as well uh, that enable you to install and manage the applications on your device very easily just by scanning a barcode. And that can automatically download and install and grant runtime permissions all from the device itself. So you don't need to have an EMM in order to do application management, although obviously there are advantages to, to using one. But the main, the main reason that anyone might want to create their own device owner is the power that it gives you. And this, this was just something I came up with going through the list of APIs in the device policy manager. Things like uh, you know, suspending system apps, disabling the camera, disabling screen capture, lock task mode, and kiosk mode. These are things which you can do as a device owner. You can initiate a mode in which only some whitelisted applications can run. And not a word to a lie, everyone that came up and spoke to me at the desk yesterday, one of the questions they had oh, for our Zebra devices was, can I do kiosk mode? Do you offer any kind of software that enables me to easily do a kiosk mode? The answer is yes. Uh, we offer a piece of software for that. But also, this feature is inherent to managed Android as well. So have you considered just using the standard APIs? And if you give a, a user or a customer an option of a standard Android API, a standard way of doing something, or something that only works on our products, then most people would tend to choose the standard way of doing things. Uh, so yeah, very powerful API sets. Um, with great power, as they say, comes great responsibility. Uh, 
Managed configurations, um, again, we've said a lot at this DroidCon about managed configurations, how great they are. I completely agree with everything that everyone has said about them. The ability to manage applications from the server in a standards compliant way without having to know anything about that application and have that application just you know, be configured. You're not dealing with specific formats of JSON files or XML. It's, it's really great and really powerful. Uh, and the, the kind of workflow that's often talked about is you have a device owner or a profile owner talking to the application, and then we have a, an EMM server, and everything's controlled by the server remotely, all very well and good. Um, don't forget, though, this bit, I've said this, this kind of communication here, is optional. You can, should you choose to do so, fully configure and control managed managed configurations or application restrictions as they were previously known directly from the device owner. And you'll see if you like load up the test DPC application and just run that on any of your devices, you'll see the applications that you have installed that are exposing these managed configs. Uh, so yeah, important point that's often missed out is that you do not have to have an EMM in order to take advantage of managed configurations in the device owner. Uh, accounts, again, uh, I haven't heard this mentioned too much at, uh, in, in the managed Android tracks, but we have the notion of, like, historically, accounts with Android were tied to the individual. It was Darren Campbell at gmail.com. Uh, well, don't, don't send that to it. That actually goes to an Australian guy. I never managed to get my Darren Campbell at gmail.com. Uh, so it, it, they are tied to an individual is the important bit. Does not work in the enterprise because these are corporate-owned devices. They're shared use, not single use, shared use. So I think the acronym changed over time. Uh, so we now have this notion of a managed, oh, I forget the name of it now, managed, oh, managed play account, that's it. So a managed play account is tied to the device and not the individual. It enables you to download applications from the managed play store, hence the name, and you can provision these applications on the device using the device owner. So typically, the, uh, the workflow is an EMM uh, interfaces with the organization's identity provider, and it creates managed accounts based on the organization. So Google don't actually have any say in that whole workflow of account creation on the device. That's handled by the EMM. Um, but technically, it is done by the device owner. So again, this is another feature that you don't need the EMM for, that you can still create managed accounts using the device owner. What you can't create is um, you, you don't have the managed Play Store unless you have uh, a managed account. So my point at the bottom here, you do not need a managed account to use a device owner. You'll often see the two terms conflated together. You say, well, it's managed Android. You have a managed account. Normally you do, but it's not required. So it's, it is a very flexible system, which Google have come up with. Uh. So that's all the great reasons of why one might want to create their own device owner. And there's some really good reasons there. I want to just cover some reasons why you might not want to do this. The first one uh, gave me a chuckle. I, I saw this on Twitter. And what someone has done, uh, they've raised an issue in the test DPC GitHub repository. This was a couple of months ago. I don't know what's happened to this issue now. And, and they're essentially saying, I want to disable the home button. So a very specific point use case. Um, so therefore, it looks, looks like they've decided that they now want to be the device owner. They want to have full control. And I apologize if this is anyone in this room that's raised this issue, actually, now I come to think of it. Uh, they want to have full control of the device just to uh, implement a very specific function. That's, and they, from a user point of view, you're making your, your administrators or whoever's enrolling the device jump through all of these hoops to make your application the device owner. You're forcing them to give you complete power and authority on your device for lock task mode and certificate installation and all this and that and the other, just because you can't be bothered to um, understand about the home screen or work with some other reputable device owner to initiate this functionality. So the key takeaway here is do not use it um, you know, when you don't need to. Don't use a sledgehammer to crack a nut, as I've said in the expression here. Uh, another similar example, device admin service. This is a new service, which I believe was introduced recently. I, I won't say when, because I'm not sure exactly when. And it is uh, not subject to Oreo, 
uh, background restrictions. So some people would read that and think, hey, this is great. Therefore, I don't want to have to worry about uh, job schedulers and alarms and you know, the fact that my services might be stopped in the background. All I have to do is use one of these device admin services. N no, again, because you're using a sledgehammer to crack a nut and you're making yourself the device owner to solve a very specific pointed use case for which there are better solutions out there, like the, the job scheduler. And uh, well, this, I've written whole blog posts on it actually in the past, but we won't get into that. That's a different topic. Um, other reasons, you might not want to create your own device owner, so I'll, I'll keep harping on at this. If, uh, if you don't own the device, or it's not a single-use device, it's a BYOD scenario, then it really is a profile owner. So although the profile owner has access to many of the same APIs, it's not exactly the same, but it is very similar, it's a different way of deploying, there are different rules, and as such, um, it, uh, it, works, it, it works with different use cases. So just make sure you're targeting the right use case. If the, uh, with everything I've just said, or I said at the beginning, with having to implement your own communication stack and the device owner and the service component, the server component, is the total cost of development and maintenance going to outstrip the cost of just purchasing in a, a, a third-party EMM, or um, depending on your use case, maybe if you're just looking for management, maybe consider that an managed Android API that we spoke about earlier on. Uh, another point there is uh, that the, uh, the new features, as new features are added to Android Enterprise, invariably they are added as APIs into the device policy manager. So. Uh, do you then, you're, you're not just developing it once, you're committing, presumably, to keeping that maintained in an area of Android which is continually evolving with every single release. And in P, we've probably seen as many, if not more, new features added to the Policy Manager API as we have in Oreo or, or Nougat or Marshmallow before it. Uh, so my point about the, the, the device owner and profile owner being different, one way they're different is that in order to enroll a device owner, the device must be new or factory reset. So if you're moving from an environment where your users have data on the device and now you want them to add the device owner, consider I, you, you'll need to either back that data up somehow and then re-establish re it, uh, because there is no way to add a device owner to the device without performing a, a, a factory reset or, a, uh, sorry, without performing a factory reset. Now, um, the, you don't, that's not true of the profile owner, so that is a, a way that they differ. How will the solution scale? Uh, I was surprised that when I said to these customers that have come to us, why don't you want to use an, an EMM? Why do you want to use your own device owner? And the feedback that we got was, we're worried about how the EMM scales. And yeah, so that's obviously a valid concern because these, these people know what they're talking about. I was taken aback by that, back by that a little bit because you know EMMs they, they scale. That's what EMMs do. They're cloud-based. We have horizontal, vertical scaling. But yeah, it's a reasonable concern for for some people. Um, but I'd also argue that that same scaling is also going to affect your EMM solution or your device owner solution, particularly if you plan on doing everything on the device without that cloud aspect. You know, how are you going to be interacting with every single device on which you have placed that device owner. There is help. Um, I think there was a, a section on Google's website, I've linked to it there, on um, implementation considerations for device owner mode. I, I think I've captured the pertinent points in this slide, but the, the source is, is there if you, if you need it. Um, so provisioning, why else? Why else might you, might you not want to create your own device owner? So if you, have, if you are using a managed Android device, you provision it in a very opinionated way, you're on the setup wizard, primarily, well this is how it used to be uh, advertised, the way to go was to use on the setup wizard, you would scan a QR code which would have enrollment data in it so that your device could then enroll with an EMM. You could tap an NFC tag which would work automatically and it has the same data, maybe that has Wi-Fi settings in to get your device on the Wi-Fi and download the DPC of the EMM from the Play Store. Um, or like with zero touch, because the reseller is communicating with like 
with Google, and then Google knows that device ABC was sold to customer XYZ. It needs to have policy manager LMN, I've run out of letters, uh, so it can download it that way. None of these uh, existing provisioning methods really work well, uh, if at all. I've never really tried them, to be honest. Uh, if you're creating your own device owner, you're, you're just you know, setting yourself up to fail, I feel, if you want to try with your own device, unless you start putting it in the Play Store, and then you really are becoming an EMM at that point. And, uh, you know, if you, if you want to be an EMM, there's a different, a different avenue down which you would follow. Um, this, you know. uh, there are easier solutions may exist. I, I think I've covered this. Um, do you, either you could use an EMM. Do you need all this control? If you do need the control, then maybe uh, an EMM is probably the right move for you. Uh, so we've covered the why. We've covered the why not. Uh, and this slide now is, is not too detailed, and it's just going to go over the how. So originally, my presentation, like I said, was going to be how you do this. And honestly, the more I thought about the how, it it's really is just have a look at how test DPC in interact or you know, get this sort of stuff working. We're, we're a bit short on time, so it's very deliberate, because 90% of the work is honestly understanding whether this is the right move for you. The extra 10% is telling you that there is this great application called Des Test DPC, if you're not aware of it. It's in GitHub and the uh, Play Store. I've been using it over the last month to investigate the new uh, features added to managed Android MP. So all of the updates are already in the code base. They're working well. I thoroughly recommend it. I I would recommend downloading from GitHub rather than Play Store, because I tend to find that that is kept more up to date. Um, but yes. Yeah, uh, the applications there. And with the application, it gives you the full gamut of features that are available to both a profile owner and a device owner. All of the code, it's open source. So if you want to know, first of all, how this stuff works, then you can have a play with it. And then how to actually code it, well, the code's all there, simple to follow, and you can modify it um, as you choose to do so. Uh, so, uh, what else have I got in here? So the actual way of enrolling the test DPC. So it's, it's really just enrolling that might be a little bit more complicated. Uh, there is a hashtag. Um, I, I don't like one. I suppose it is. It's a pound sign or a hashtag, isn't it? Um, AFW test DPC. Uh, and using that technique, you can create, you can enroll test DPC as the device owner on the device if you want to have a play with the version from the Play Store. To use the GitHub version, you just need to use an ADB command. I've got that in a subsequent slide to enroll the device owner. Uh, so we're coming to the end of the presentation. I the other slide I have on how, there's no guide out there at the moment that exists on how, how to create your own device owner. There is a guide on how to create your own profile owner on Google's website, so I've, I've linked to that there. It's, um, it's, well, it gives you the information that you need it's in as much detail as you would need, to be honest. Uh, just make sure you understand the end-to-end -end process of enrollment. So I mentioned there's an ADB command. There's also Zebra has you know the the OEM specific application for application management also can handle enrolling your app as a DO. So although those three solutions um, that are available at the moment on the setup wizard might not work for your own device owner, maybe you'll be able to make use of an OEM tool to enroll your DO, such as Zebra's Stage Now. Uh, and uh, what that does, it outputs some, it outputs a barcode, and you can scan that barcode on your device, and that will automatically enroll the, the APK that you've previously installed on the device as the device owner, or it will download the APK should it need to do so. Uh, I also included there a link to the Device Policy Manager API, which is the, the API surface that you'll be coding against as you develop your device owner, your DO. Uh, what is in there? Ah, so the, the final point there, what is interfacing with the device owner? This is the point that if you're not creating your own EMM, are you going to have a password on the device? You're going to have a key combination which shows the, um, that brings the device owner to the front, because you don't want the end user to be able to launch your DO, but at the same time, you want the DO to be able to manage apps. So without that server communication, you'll need some maybe some buttons on the device, or maybe you're sending it some messages. Well, if you're sending it messages in, in uh, Firebase Cloud Messaging, then you're, at that point, developing some kind of EMM, aren't you? So just consider how you're actually going to be interfacing with the 
device owner. And then finally, a uh, couple of notes on testing. So the ADB command for provisioning the test DPC as the device owner is there. Uh, ADB shell DPM set device owner. Just to make sure there's no uh, accounts or um, accounts or something else. It, it works on a factory reset device, or you will have trouble unless you remove all email accounts and, uh, and something else. Well, you'll, you'll find out when you, when you try and do it yourself. Uh, the OEM solutions may be available. Like I said, this is the XML, which stage now outputs. Very similar. Um, enroll device owner. It takes a package name, and it takes the, the class name of this device admin receiver. So I, I just use the test DPC example for both here. So here, it's giving the package name and the receiving class. And then same here, you just have to state the receiving class explicitly with with stage now. And with that, as a slide of the resources which I've used here, I've, I've said here that the Android management API is still in beta. I understand talking from the team that that's not the whole story, but uh, the, the link is, is still accurate and correct there. And I believe we are set. I think we've got a couple of minutes if there's any questions at all. Thank you, first. Thank you, Darren. Thank you. Yes, we have time.